So let's try to do something for the complex stuff. Let us first look at some disassembly to get an idea how this how this code actually looks like. We are looking for arithmetic decode bitmap. I hate these files. Why? These mangled names are so horrible. I think now we are here. Mm, yeah, we see some inlining. So the definitely what is inlined is the pixel value function is inlined. Here is the here are timing starts are the TSC. So actually. Um, yeah, I don't know. Here and here, and now the pixel. Okay, first, first what we have inside here is the decision which template to do, which is of course stupid because this does not, this does not vary inside the loop. So where does the loop jump to? Probably this is the loop label, right? This is a loop label. I guess LL are the loops, right? Could this be? Yeah, yeah, LL4. I think, yeah, this, this decision inside here is also not so nice. I mean, but this is at least a very predicted decision. I mean, the templates are also, but this is also stuff, all stuff that is costing us time that is not necessary. So, okay, this is still, this is our profiling, profiling stuff. It's, it's, yeah, I think the shift, the shift is still from the RDTSC because for some reason this gives the number in AX and DX, and this is combined here, so this is still. This is something that has been pulled up from below, I guess. So this is, yeah. And these, yeah, these are horrible, these comparisons. They are, what they are actually testing is that, um, the thing is, if you put the template here, then you have cases where, oh, let me draw that somewhere. Uh, you have cases, let's say you are working on this pixel, then the template is actually sticking out outside of the bitmap. And the standard says that in these cases, you should be, treat this as, as zero bits. So you need some kind of special handling. I mean, either you could you could make the bitmap larger and fill it with zeros before, uh, but then you need to waste some some memory and create fragmentation in the memory and so on. So that's not so nice. Or you need to special case somehow <clears throat> this stuff so to check. Uh, to check the position of the pixel and this of course this costs time so this is something we will want to avoid doing this too much so 
So, but let's first go for the low hanging fruit that we already see. Oh, I should have put some kind of marker there, so I find this again. I think if I Google just for something in the program text, it will be fine. Uh, the first thing is we want to get these these decisions. We want to get them out of the loop, which also means we need to specialize the decoder for values of some variables. Which we could do using a template. So that's actually something where I say maybe the use of a template is a good idea here. Maybe. Actually, We could even use an inline function and hope that the compiler is smart enough to do constant propagation and so on. But with a template, we could really force it to, to do this stuff. What I'm thinking is we could could we have a template like this, like I mean, in a template, we really force it to do the constant propagation, right? We could also do... We could do an inline function with const expression arguments to really force it to evaluate them at, at compile time. Let us try that because that's the, that's the simplest way to do it. So let's move this all into an implementation namespace and then what, what will we keep? What will we keep and what will become constants? So for sure, this is not something we will do here. Yeah, these will move outside for sure. So let's just add the, con the constants here. So this will become a const expression. This will become a const expression, a stride not. So this will become a const expression. Yeah, this will also be a const expression then. Mm, this will be a const expression. We will move this outside of the parameter structure. And actually we could use here that I don't know if the Microsoft compiler already understands this if const expression. Yeah, this could then probably become, could this then become a static assert? I mean, probably, I'm not sure if that will work, but I think we probably need also to switch switch our compiler up to a new system if we do that. 
Okay. Yeah. This all remains the same. We could maybe move some values out of the structs to make it pro faster, maybe. Okay, yeah, the template, the template will definitely become, and the X template, this will become, we will combine this into one. Yeah, template selection will, uh, template, and X template will be combined. Into whatever, I mean, it doesn't really matter that much because let's see, because it is a, a compile time constant. I don't know if this if class expression will work in Microsoft Visual C++. So template x template equals So this is actually the template and the x template how do we do this best? We would have the template here and the X template bit, because the X template bit is just one bit. Template template zero, X template actually one in this case. This could move outside. Then as if const expression template x template equals zero shift left one or zero. This is the template zero x template is zero case. No cost expression. So this is template one. Template two. Template three. So this is a lot of constants here now. Okay, um, actually, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, we still need that. No way around that so far. We need to check for errors even inside these tight loops, unfortunately. I mean, we could, this is also something we could think about is if we can check errors only afterwards, it's difficult because then we maybe need to run over invalid data and so on. And actually, I mean, the error check is very well predictable because it never happens normally. It 
branch. So the branch is very predictable. Okay, and here we now, yeah, this will become different. This is all gone. No, this is gone, 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 gone. And now we need to define, now we do need to do all the special cases here. Uh, this is dependent on the template. So how do we do that? This will become const expressions. This will be gone. This we don't need here, but here. This is also, I don't know, this is not even needed here, but this, this must be a const expression. And so we cannot, we cannot do this like this. We cannot do it like this. <clears throat> so what do we need to switch on a lot? We need to switch on a lot. That's a bit of a nasty thing. Template X template. Let's, let's put this down here. What we need to switch on. So what's a nice way to do this? Well, let's first give this a nicer shape, what we need. Um, This will be last. So this is a small number. I'm thinking of doing something like this, like a variant to do a variant selection. And this gets all of this stuff. So, template x template. No, not template x. We actually need to do GB bounds. We need the template. Let's assign the bit numbers afterwards. Okay, as it be context index, this is a constant, this is not a selection. Um, n bits per pixel is something that we need here.
and the black value is something that we will also need here. Ah, the problem is the black value actually can, oh, yeah. The black value can actually be, I think up to 32 bits. Yeah, it can be up to 32 bits. I mean, we only use, we only use like 32 different values. So it's not so bad, but I think I will leave that one as a variable because that's only used for the halftone region. So we'll not make this a const expression. So we will not add this here. We could later, but so we have one bit for this one. We have so one bit used. GB template, this is two bits. So here we are at three bits. Uh, this is, a, a f oh, now we must be careful because we had it in a different, we had it in a different order. So let's make this zero bits. So n bits per pixel has the values eight and 32. So there's, you, that uses six bits. Six bits, then here we are at seven. And here we are at nine. And actually I will make this. Either a macro or or Let's see if it works with a function. That, that would become a const evil function, I guess. I think we need to make it a macro. In this, in this case, a macro is just more reliable. This is GB Brian selection, TPGD on, GB template, um, X template, and n bits, bits per pixel. And this will just expand to this bit shifting RG here. So we need the parentheses here and this will GB template. This will become X template and this will stay. So we need one level more of parentheses. So that's our nice macro. And now it works like this. Here we use it with the variables. So all oh, these ones, oh no, this is annoying. Yeah, good that we have Vim here. Otherwise, this would be really annoying. Vim is so nice. 
So we have the variant selected and now we will make a switch. Which never hits its default, hopefully. <clears throat> and now we go through all the combinations. Zero, 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 eight. Uh, yeah, and now this gets a new name, arithmetic decode bitmap implementation. Yeah. Now let's call it core or something, ADD core. That's too short for my taste. Arithmetic D decode bit bit bitmap core. The problem is I mean, we really need to force inlining of this stuff. So maybe we should really make this into a template. I mean, because inlining, inlining itself is not so crucial. What is crucial is constant propagation. And constant propagation only works if this is inlined, if it's not a template. So I think, I think I want to make this a template. And to have these things except for the black value be template arguments. Actually, then we could have kept the separation of the other ones. I think then we don't need the inline, strictly speaking, probably, hopefully. So then this would be gone here, and they would be gone. That would be my idea, so to make these templates arguments. Uh, let's order them like we have in the variant selection. Actually, yeah, we will do this differently. We'll do GB. This is cleaner, I think. Let me do GB template and pull X template uses reference template. That is cleaner. I mean, we could of course do some of this stuff by template matching, but I don't like that. So, let's 
So here we have, actually we should do this differently. We should have here false template zero x template, <coughs> sorry, false eight bits. And we have exactly the same here. So this should maybe also become a mark hole if we if this gets too bad here. So what do we have here? STS decoder. This that we are passing decoder around as a pointer over so so much depth is also not nice. We will probably do something about that soon. So that's how we roll here. And now we need that for all the variants that we support. So, oh, I forgot something. There's one further template argument. This would be easier with the const expression because we would we need to look this up here in the in the array. But why not, <clears throat> why not code this directly here? This is a function. This is a function of the. I mean, we could also. We could rely. Let's first try to rely on the constant propagation of the compiler and put this put this up here and let's say let's force this to be I don't know if this will work if the compiler will be smart enough to look this up constantly I mean, the index is uh, definitely a compilation constant, so compile time constant, so it should not be impossible for the compiler to do it, but I have no idea if that would, would be a thing. So then we really have only, oh, sorry. Then we really have only the four parameters here. <laughs> in addition to a shitload of others. So we have zero and four, sorry, with zero and true. And for the other ones, I think we only have the false. One, two, three. So this is error prone. A macro would be nicer here that copies the values in both. Maybe we do this afterwards. So that is the variance with the typical prediction switched off. Now with the, there will be so many cores for this routine. Those are those with the typical prediction switched on because there will be further things we need to distinguish. And now we have the whole crap again for the 32-bit variant. Wow. I mean, what really will become a problem is when we start, when we start to support different P 
pixel formats actually, really different pixel formats. That probably we will do this in two steps. First decode into a packed bit format and then do the, the expansion to different bitmap because it, it, otherwise it just becomes unmanageable and Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe something works here. Probably not. Probably it does not compile because we made some horrible mistakes. Oh, yeah, this is, should not be here. Failed. Okay, we do not fail here. Yeah, that is because we actually what we should do here is to do an XX join for all these cases here. Is a C17 language extension, yeah, and we will we will activate actually if we can. Can we do that? How do we do it? I think that's the first time I use a C17 feature. Actually, there was something with CMake, CMake, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Targets property. Can I set, can I set this generally? Can I set a property for everything in the project? I don't I don't want to program CMake for that. That's not something I want to do. It's still not something that can set it on all targets. Can I get a list of all targets at least? People don't know. Wow, I think I, I really need to get rid of CMake also. This is way too complicated for something that is just adding a simple compiler switch somewhere. Can I not just, I mean, it's for Visual Studio, it should be a fixed, okay, it is slash std slash this should be possible to add right i mean without doing some crazy script programming add compile options maybe is there such, such a thing Uh, 
let's see if that works. Why is it not known? This is wrong. Let's clean all the stuff. No, not quite clean. Probably because I have, yeah, I have something. Oh, I have something running here, I guess. It's just, no, it should not be a closed remedy, right? Why can it not? No, help, nothing is working. Why can it not delete the... Yeah, there's something used by another process. What is that? It's not here. This must be Visual Studio keeping keeping a handle open. Let's get out of here. I mean, this is not... We should maybe... I will make a snapshot. Or can I... Can I say, I have no idea how to open it. I, I think I will, I think I will just make a screenshot because I have no idea what, how to open this format that I get here. Let's get out of here. And let's see if that helped with the cleaning. Not yet. I mean, it takes a while to shut Visual Studio down. Oh, maybe it's it's just that I'm in the directory here. Yeah, now it's gone. Now everything is clean. So we make, make CDs, go to profile, we run CMake. And now, for the first time, we should be compiling C++ 17. People, we are modern C++ here on this channel, which does not use any modern C++ features. So let's take a look at our ridiculously named ninja rules or build.ninja first. Yeah, we have the STD C17 here that worked. At least that worked. Uh, so let us ninja it. Ninja everything. No, not everything. Ninja the program we want to run. What? <laughs> what is this? Unknown. Do I need lowercase? Do I need lowercase I think so yeah 
static assertion failed. Interesting. So the static assertion itself was accepted. Interesting. This one failed. Okay, probably because it thinks that the template could be instantiated with different values, right? Or did we make a mistake down there? Oh, we made a mistake because these cases, they do not arise for they do not arise for bit width 32. If this works, this is really cool. I mean, static assert is a feature I really love. It's so great. I, I have no idea why it took them so long to edit. Yeah, static assert is, is the, it's such a good feature. It's, is one of the best language features ever and it took them forever to edit. At least it's working. So we have compiled something. Do we crash when we run it? Because this was a major change. I should actually be sure to baseline the rest here also. I, would, I want all of those histograms. I don't want the order statistics that is garbage. Do I still print them? I should no longer print them. Um. No, we shouldn't print them. Is this so long, so long ago that I executed something here? Yes, it is slow. Okay, but, but we are doing the histograms, so. Actually, I should first run the tests to see if anything, anything still works. I have no idea if anything still works. So maybe we are fast, but not working faster. Yeah, for sure not faster. So, what do we have? <clears throat> Let's compare. The context building had a median of 85. Now it has a median of 71. People, if this is true and this is still working, that is a good result for one step of optimization. 